my friends and welcome to uh, welcome Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Tammy Ernest and I am a long arm quilter. And here on my channel, I like to share customer finishes as well as my own projects. And uh, so today I have some updates on my Calico Garden uh, sew along that I'm doing with Lori Holt. And I have a couple of other projects that I've been working on for some clients. And then we're gonna go over some customer quilts. Um, but I just wanted to make an observation first of all. Um, I laugh a lot of times when we uh, get to church on a Sunday morning and realize that all the ladies are dressed in the same color and um, nothing we planned and I, I've just been making this observation lately that we will arrive at church and everybody will have on blues or everybody may have on black and gray today or um, my son is um, the uh, song leader at our church and invariably he and the pastor will be sitting up on the stage and they'll have the same color suit on or they'll have the same color shirt with their suit coat you know and I've been making this observation lately I really think it's weather related we get up in the morning and we dress not just um, whether we wear short sleeves or long sleeves but what color we dress in I think is related to the weather outside and so I've been making this observation so today I get up and I'm deciding what to wear today. So because what I put on to video is what I'm gonna be wearing the rest of the day. Um, I have customers to meet with this afternoon. I have Quilt Guild this evening. So I'm deciding what to wear. And so I pick out this um, pink top. I usually you know, like muted colors, but I picked out this pink top today, um, put a sweater on with it because it's a, um, a tad bit chilly. But then I start hanging up the customer quilts that we're gonna go over today. And I'm seeing this, this uh, pattern <laughs> in the colors. I mean, so not only is it the clothes that we wear, but I really think it's the, the quilts that we're making. Depends on the season we're in, doesn't it? So if you can't tell um, by the colors around today, what would you guess the weather would be here in Indiana today? It's very sunny. Um, very bright. Everything is in bloom. Our crab apple tree is as pink as this shirt is today. Uh, daffodils are out, our bleeding hearts. I'll try to put some pictures in here or at least I'll put them in my newsletter this um, this week. Uh, so if you don't get my newsletter, uh, jump over and sign. I'll put the link down in the description so you can sign up for that. So I'll at least put those pictures uh, of the flowers that are blooming, but um, our bleeding hearts are blooming and they, they are as pink uh, as that right there. Um, pinks are everywhere and so I'm thinking it's coming out in the things that I'm wearing and the quilts that we're we're quilting it's just so funny so that's a side note just observation there but look at your clothes what are you wearing today is it some sort of pink or rose or something maybe uh anyway sorry um it's a little cooler here today we had 70 degree weather last week and then um yesterday and today is we had a little bit of rain over the weekend and some blustery yesterday but the sun came out yesterday afternoon and it's been sunny here today um, it's like in the mid 60s so it's a nice spring day tomorrow's supposed to be in the 80s we've got a couple days of 80s and then we draw back down to the 40s so all over the place but it's april i'm just enjoying this sunny day so let's get on to some um, uh, quilt alongs that i've been working on you know i've been working on um, the uh, Calico Garden quilt along. This is Lori Holt's pattern. And we are about halfway through um, this sew along. And um, so the blocks are coming along. And so, so far, um, what have I shown you? I've done, I've got a couple more of these done. I'll show you those today of the, um, the star flowers. We have um, the pick of fences done, the chickens are done, the garden girl the um the rake and shovel the hollyhocks i'm going to show you the tomato one today and the bee skip today and we've got several of these that are around the outside cone flowers um and uh tulip ones and some, just a lot of these others all around the edges are done so we're starting to work on some of these inner ones now that the outer ones are done and um a lot of fun so I'm still a few weeks behind I'm always with customer quilts I don't have as much time um, 
to devote to this as I would like to, but I'm, I'm not far behind. I'm not far, so uh, I'm pretty excited about this. So first of all, let's start out with um, the B skip block right there. And this one was a lot of fun to work on. I like um, that Laura used all different colors of yellows in the B skip. Instead of just making it one big yellow print, what she had you do is cut these, um, all these different yellow, mustardy yellow prints into, um, into strips and then arrange those stacked on top of each other. And that's a lot of fun. Creates a lot of interest there. You can see the background fabric is the, is the white with the uh, yellow chicks on it. Really, really cute. And then this is um, a flower block that's on there. And um, one of the things that I messed up on, <laughs> let me show you the bottom part of this. What did I do with that? So here's a little stand that um, goes along here. And I um, appliqued my flower block along and then read in Lori's instructions that you may not want to applique all the way down to the bottom so that you can um, sew this so that it looks like the bee skip is sitting on the table. So by not, I mean, I left a quarter of an inch or so, but that's not gonna be a whole lot of room to be able to sew these together. So uh, mine may sit up off of it a little bit more than it should. So what I will do, so what I could do is I could pull this, the B skip up a little bit. It's gonna be hard to show you. <laughs> and then I lay this table right there and sew along the edge of the table. And I'm doing the underneath fabric. I'm, I'm stitching the table to the background fabric so that when I make this stitch along the table there, then when I unfold it, see, I would have to do it pretty high up. Let me try that again. I have to stitch it so close to that B-skip. I may have to put like a zipper foot on there or something where I can get really close because I just didn't leave myself enough room. If I put a zipper foot on there, then I could get a lot closer in um, to that B-skip and so that I could stitch right there. And then when I opened it up, it would look a little bit more. So not a huge problem, just I should have read farther into the instructions before I did that. And I went ahead and applied that flower down without um, sewing that table part on there first. Not a big deal, but but if you're sewing along, just make that note <laughs> before you sew your before you applique all the way down to the bottom. I did well. I didn't applique the sides, but um, but I did those flowers, and I just don't have a whole lot of room there. So really really cute I like the yellows I really like the yellows it's a summery yellow I, I like this color yellow more than a pale yellow um, really cute so that block sits um, right next to the tomato block and let me show you my tomato block this is a large one again sitting in a large pot the pots really cute and again, Lori has you doing those handles by you're making um, one big oval with the blue and another smaller oval with the white. You glue those on top of each other and then you cut it in half. And then so half of it goes on one side and half of it goes on the other side and that makes uh, the handles for the urn. And then the tomatoes. I have a few that aren't finished being appliqued down. Um, so you might see those sticking up a little bit more. I just uh, ran out of time. But most of them are down. All right, and I wanted to show you something. I am very happy with how straight I got this bias tape on this one. So you see the um, the the stalk, I guess you would say, of where the tomato is, the straight up and down one, and then the horizontal ones. I did a pretty good job of keeping these straight. Let me show you another block that I was not as happy with how I did it. This was the hollyhocks block. And I just want you to notice, now it's not terrible, but, and it could be because those circles are um, overlapping the bias, but I just felt like my bias um, strips there were just a little wobbly, okay? And I think the 
problem was is when I stitched these, I started up one side and I got up to about here and then I went around the circle. And then I went up a little farther till I got to the next one and I went around the circle and went on. And so what happened is it kind of wiggled my bias tape some. And I'm not gonna redo it. I don't think it's, it's that terrible, but I just thought it could be a little cleaner. So when I did the tomato block, what I actually did, I glue basted the tomatoes down. So you can see like this one's not done, but it's in place. There's so little dots of glue holding it right there. So it's not going anywhere. But before I, uh, and I've done the other three on this row, I just didn't get to this fourth one. Before I actually applique the tomatoes down, I um, pulled this back a little bit, each of the four tomatoes along there, pulled the leaves up just a tad bit so you can see how they're not completely um, tacked down either. So they're tacked down like in the middle of the leaf, but I was able to pull them up from the bottom. And I did the whole bias strip first. I applique that whole bias strip first. So I went all the way down, just lifting up the leaves and the tomatoes went all the way down and all the way across. I did the same thing um, for this long piece. I just did this one down and back, and then I did this one up here down and back. Um, and I think that kept it a lot straighter. But, and then went back and did around the tomatoes and around the leaves. So just a little tip there. I think that worked a lot better. You know, it's a lot more stops and starts that way. Um, but I think the overall effect was much, much cleaner anyway. Um, so just a tip there. And I do all my applique by machine and I use a monofilament thread on the top so that you cannot see the stitches. And I'll try to get in here real close um, to that top block. Maybe the side would be better. And I, um, I use a blanket stitch around the edge, so it's doing a solid line around the edge and is just jumping over and doing the stitching on the inside. And um, I have a whole uh, machine applique video, and I'll link that down below as well. Just shows you how I do the machine applique. Um, I like hand applique, but I don't have time for hand applique. <laughs> I have too many other interests. In the evening, I'm working on bindings or I'm working on uh, my cross stitch and I don't wanna sit and do hand applique. So I do it all by, my, by machine. My backing, um, the thread on the back is a white. So I use the monofilament on the front and then a white thread on the back. And you can see how the white thread doesn't come through on the, to the front. I don't need to use a monofilament on the back. That bobbin thread does not, does not come through. If you see it kind of pull through at times, sometimes when you're stitching, you might see that little white thread pull through. Um, but then when you finish the stitch, it pulls it back down into there. Uh, so don't be afraid of that. So like I said, I have a video where I show how I machine applique, and I'll link that down below. If you um, are new to, to Lori Holt's applique, the way she does her applique, um, her sew along guide is free on her website, but you do have to purchase the Sew Simple Shapes. And here's an example of one of the Sew Simple Shapes. This was uh, for the b skep block. I think this was the shape we used for, <laughs> it's upside down, for the pink flowers. And again, with these, she did them similar to the handles where you're doing the whole shape and then cutting it in half. And so um, this is an example of one of her so simple shapes. So it's a, a template, it's a plastic template. And how you use this is you trace it onto interfacing and she also has her own interfacing. Um, I think you could, you could get away with a different interfacing as well. I mean, it's a little heftier. Um, I wouldn't use the thinnest interfacing, but um, but I do, uh, her interfacing, I have some of that with me too. She has it in stacks and she also has it on like, a, I think this, I forget how much this is. It comes in a package like this. Um, and I did, I used one, less than one on um, the My Happy Place quilt along last year. And I finished using that one for this quilt along and then had to buy one to start again for this quilt along. But anyway, what you're doing is you're um, tracing that so simple shape onto the interfacing. Then you are putting that interfacing 
um, laying it on top of your fabric like this on the right side of your fabric then you take this is obviously not the right size and it's got the the selvage edge on there this is just for an example um, and then you take this to your sewing machine and you stitch all the way around right on that line cut away the extras you know just like quarter inch outside of that or whatever and then you're going to slit this um, interfacing right here and you're going to turn it inside out and my favorite tool my new favorite tool for turning it inside out are these um thread stats is what they call them and these came in one of my sew sampler boxes and i decided to try it i like the blunt end on this lori suggests that you use this tool and i have used this tool and it works well it is a little pointier and I find that I push too hard and I end up pushing through some of my seams when I am um, when I'm turning my applique so I do I've been using these more and I really really like it they're a little bit of a blunt end and I actually the other day I used these I had a thread get stuck uh, in the bobbin case of my long arm and that's what these were meant to be not for your long arm necessarily but for any of your sewing machines they're meant as a um, let me see if I can open them um, as a way to grab thread without cutting it so um, so they've got like a scissor tooth type here connection and that's why it's a little harder for me to open them um, that when it when you lock it into place it's really tight so when they're open though then they're like scissors but they're not gonna cut they uh, can hold on to so I had a thread get stuck in my bobbin case the other day and so I got these out and I grabbed that little piece of thread in between here and I was able to pull it right out um, it didn't cut it, but it pulled it. It was perfect. So I'm really liking these. These are one of those things that you don't know you need until you have it. Um, but I've really enjoyed these. So from Fat Quarter Shop, I got them in my sew sampler box a couple months back. Um, but I'm really enjoying them. So then also with my Lori Holt Quilt Along, I have finished all of the, well partly finished. I have finished all of the calico star flower blocks that have um, this background, the white with the, with the red. These are all yellows and blues, all mustards and blues with this background. And I have finished all of those. Now, not completely finished because you do, oh, I lied, didn't I? There's a gray one. Uh, the rest of them are all yellows and blues. Um, there is a circle that I need to um, trace on the interfacing turn inside out and it goes right here in the middle and uh, that's what I have left to do on those and so I've started on the next set that uses a different background and it uses this um, white print with the yellow chicks on it and here's the first one I have done with this one and so we're starting into some of the pinks and um, let me find my pattern again here so you can see around so the yellows and the blues all the way around are done um, but now you've got several pinks I still got some greens to go and um, looks like one purple and maybe one more gray one to go two more gray ones maybe three oh, <laughs> I'm finding them as I'm looking so I have I have several more to do on this but I'm excited to start on another um, feel like I'm making progress when I start on another background print different from those those others so making progress on those and that is how far I am on my calico garden so looking at the schedule um, the ones that I do not have done that she's already given out are just two weeks I the potting shed and the roof and chimney uh, so let me show you what those look like potting shed is the big one in the middle and the roof and chimney right there. So the big part in the middle is what she worked on last week. And then um, Monday of this week, the wheelbarrow block. That one is so cute with the pumpkins. And if you watched my floss two video last week, you know that we used to have a pumpkin patch. So pumpkins are just uh, so fun. Um, very important in our life or have been in the past so she's working on all of these things in the middle so that's the things I still need to do to be caught up and then still working on some of those calico star blocks but I'm not too far not too far 
but I've been busy with some other projects and I wanted to show you those as well. So let me kind of set this away. Um, occasionally I have clients that are not quilters that find um, either quilts that family members have left that were never finished or, um, or blocks or things like that. And so I've been working with one client for a couple years now as uh, she had quilters in her family, her mom and her aunt, um, specifically that I remember, and uh, they had left some blocks that have not been finished. And so I've made, I've taken a couple tablecloths um, that had been cross-stitched and she wanted those made into quilts and I finished those for her. I um, finished a yo-yo quilt that all the yo-yos were done but they hadn't been made into a quilt so we finished that one. There was another baby blanket that we did. So I've done several projects for her over the years. Recently she gave me a whole set of spool blocks. And let me show you a smaller piece. She gave me a whole set of these spool blocks that had been, I'm trying to see, you can't see those one prints. There you go. That had not been finished into a quilt. This is one small section of them. Now these are all machine stitched. You can see on the back, they are machine stitched. Um, and all done with clothing. So this is like your 60s um, polyester right there. This one is more, this one looks like um, a dress print. Here, this red probably is like a little girl's dress or something like that. And here, you can picture that as a top. So they're all made out of clothing. All have the same white background fabric. But um, there's a pretty one. So she had all these blocks that were left but hadn't been made into a quilt. So right now I have um, a quilt top together. This one measures, mm, I'd say like 45 by 50 or so. And I just wanted to show you this, the, the um, point I'm at right now. This is ready to go on the long arm. I have the whole um, blocks, all the blocks together. And this is so interesting to see how the blocks were put together. So this is called a spools block, but this is all done with templates. And um, it is so interesting to see how quilting has gone through stages. You know, we did um, hand pieced and uh, these are not hand pieced, they're now machine pieced. But before rotary cutters came out and um, before you had the, the rulers, they worked with templates. And the funny thing, not funny, but this is so cool, is that in the bag of spool blocks are the actual templates that her aunt used. And I just had to show you this. To me, this is just so fun. I mean, to I'm holding in my hands <laughs> templates that um, a quilter that came before me actually used to make this quilt that I'm holding. She's no longer here, but the history that um, I'm holding in my hands is just, uh, to me, is, is very special. So let me show you some of these templates. So these are actually, they what to me appear like a, a church bulletin is what they um, are uh, cut from because it's a little thicker um, material, not material, a little thicker paper and reading on it, it looks like it's a church bulletin. Um, if Can you see all the pin pricks into that? Where she has pinned the, the, uh, the template onto the fabric and then cut around it. Can you see all of those? So cute, so cute. Um, and then here's another one for another, another shape. And she has written on it spools. This is, this is just so special to me. I just think this is really cool. So uh, there are a few um, blocks. So this one is the white background and it's cut from this template right here. And you can see in the quilt, the quilt block, that that was this piece right here. And so then you have a small triangle and then you have, so the small triangle is that uh, template on the front and that one is sewn onto the white to create this, you know, this triangle. And then you have this larger triangle for this side and this side. 
and then they're sewn together. So you're sewing the white onto the small triangle and then stitching those, if you can see on the back. Let me do a darker fabric. So what appears to me is she is um, then got, so let me show you this side. <laughs> Try the best way. From looking at the way it's pieced on the back, so here's one of the white ones with one of the colored ones, the small triangle with that, um, is that a parallelogram? Testing my math remembrance here. Parallelogram, so is those two are sewn together, and then that is sewn with um, the larger triangle. So you're making this triangle here, and then you're doing the same thing on this side, and then those two are joined together in this seam right here. So special, just so, so much history right there. I just think that is adorable. This would be so cute and um, put together at the frame with maybe a picture of the of the quilt. So this quilt is ready to go on the long arm. Like I said, it's about a 40 by 50 or something like that. All different pieces of clothing um, turned. Um, some of the blocks have been put together. I just finished putting the blocks that were not in the quilt. I did not make any of the spool blocks. All of those spools were already together. It's basically just um, putting those spools, the spools that were made together into a quilt top. And that's what I've done. And ready to go on the long arm then. And I think what I'm gonna do this last section that I had, it, um, it didn't, I was trying to make this in a rectangle type shape and this these didn't fit on there. I couldn't get enough of an, one row. You know, if I took this apart and made six of them, that wasn't gonna be long enough to add another row to it. So I just kept these separate. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna incorporate these into the backing. Um, maybe in the middle of the backing, I will um, add some fabric on either side to make it long enough and then on the top and the bottom to make it um, the size I need for the backing. But I think that'll be really special. So that's one project I've been working on recently. Let me put all these back in the bag so I don't lose any of those templates. So hopefully next week I will have that off of the long arm and the binding. That'll be my goal. That'll be my goal. And uh, to show you that next week and then get that back to the client. So just another look there. Then once I get it all done, I'll be able to do a better picture of the whole quilt and just all the different fabrics. I might have had a dress even like that. <laughs> just really cute. Oh, and I was gonna say, one of the templates on there, the um, paper on the back, I could see a date of 1986 um, from that bulletin. So that gives you an idea of how, how old that is there. And another project that I've been working on for the client is she had a bunch of, um, embroidered pillowcases and mostly pillowcases, a couple tablecloths as well that had been done. And she asked if there was anything that I could do with those. And so I had um, a different client bring me a quilt last year where she had taken vintage um, tablecloths and um, hankies and um, and aprons and things like that and she had made this quilt here this is in um, a magazine this was in today's quilter is the name of the magazine let me see if I can find a date on here no it just says www.todaysquilter.com so maybe if you're interested you can look it up there I don't see a date to know what magazine this was from. But let me show you a whole picture. So this is what the entire quilt looks like. And the designer is Carolyn Forster, F-O-R-S-T-E-R. And um, I'll include this at the bottom. I don't know if these email and um, websites are still accurate, but I'll include it in the description down below. She does have an email and um, a website. She's from the UK. Um, but she designed this pattern, and it's using um, antique or vintage um, cloth of some sort, whether, you know, whatever it may be, an apron or a tablecloth or... Um, napkins or um, pillowcases, any of those things. 
So this is the idea. So you're cutting um, a large, this is like an eight and a half by eight and a half inch square here. You can see the block um, right here. So you're cutting an eight and a half inch square here. You're adding these two and a half inch squares on either side and a two and a half inch square is the white one right here. And then they have you cut two and a half inch here, uh, eight and a half by two and a half out of the same vintage cloth. And then these two blocks are joining up right here. And I'll show you, I did a little different there just so I didn't have to cut some of those pieces into two and a half inch squares. So this is what I'm working on right now. It's not completely finished, but let me show you a couple of the, some of the blocks that I do have done. Oh, and I have to show you. I'm keeping these together with these new, um, I didn't bring the, the card down from, I can't even think off the top of my head. I think I know, but I don't wanna say and be wrong, but these are the cutest little clips. So this is row one of this quilt, and aren't those adorable? I just love those. Anyway, so here's one, one block. So you can see how I've cut. Now, let me explain something too. When I was looking at the pattern, I thought, why is she, um, I'll try to get the lighting right. Why is um, she cutting those so that the eight and a half square, eight and a half inch square, it's not centered on this, on this piece of um, of cloth? And I didn't understand that until I started cutting a, apart the. Uh, this was a uh, pillowcase, and to center it, you don't have enough. I mean, the pillowcase ended, you know, like right here. And so they're not going to be centered. I'm going to be using more of the, uh, the pillowcase here and just getting this part of the design onto here. So I'm using as much of the design as I can, but it's not going to be centered on that eight and a half inch block. And I, it's, the more I'm working with it, I'm really, um, I'm liking that. It just gives you a glimpse into it. I'm also trying to use as much of the, um, the fabric from this vintage cloth, even for these two and a half inch triangle or rectangle. Pfft two and a half inch squares here. So you can see like this one, on the corner of this one is um, cut from those same, not the same one, but uh, another one of the um, pieces of cloth that we had. I'm joining that with a jelly roll. Um, I purchased a jelly roll. And I thought I brought down the rest of that jelly roll, but I don't see it now. Maybe I didn't. Anyway, it's a jelly roll. It's by, it's called um, a Gr Grace is the um, fabric line. And it's by Brenda Riddle. And it's just a very soft florals. There are some ginghams. I don't want to um, pull all this apart because I have, <laughs> I'll show you what I have. The ones that aren't done, I have just stacked with the, um, the two and a half inch piece that I'm going to use as the out around the edges and so I don't want to undo them too much. You can see um, there's another lighter floral. Here's um, a light blue print. There are some ginghams. I love the gray. That's a piece of... and there's some yellow. So you can see these floral prints. Those are all from that jelly roll that I, I picked up. And there's a blue one. I like the pastels. I thought they went well with the pillowcases. Some of them are a little brighter yellow, um, but overall I think I liked the feel of that. So let me show you some of these blocks. I'll take my thing off. So you saw this first one. And here's another one. So this one is uh, cross-stitched. It's a yellow, those are daffodils. And then, so I've tried, I don't have enough to do all of the two and a half inch squares with, um, with pieces that are embroidered. So some of them are just white and I'm trying to spread those out throughout. So you can see they're all different ones. I'm not matching the same um, cloth to the same eight and a half inch square. I'm trying to, trying to mix and match there. Then this one is applique, machine applique. And you can see that one. So those are the ones I have done from row one. I have a few others here. This one uses the gingham, the blue gingham. Just so cute. And that's cross stitch on that pillowcase. This one was a brighter one and I wanted to incorporate it into the quilt. So 
Um, the yellows and oranges on this one are a little bright. So I, I tried to tone it down some with the, just the green gingham and not some of the floral prints that might have clashed with that. But by putting it with the green gingham, um, I think it has enough of a buffer around it that it's not going to clash with the other fabrics. And this one is actually embroidery. See the pretty stitching on that. And this is, um, all these florals are from that same jelly roll. And then this one, look at this pillowcase. That crocheted dress on there. And I know some people are gonna say, why in the world did you cut into that? But the client really, she wanted something usable. <laughs> You know, you've got all these pillowcases that you're, we just don't use them that way anymore. And if they're just gonna be stacked up on a shelf, she really wanted them to be put into something that she would use. And a quilt, we can show off all of the different um, stitching and have it laid over the back of a couch or, um, or a rocking chair or something like that. And I don't think it'll be used. This is one of those quilts, it's not meant for the kids to use, but it's meant to remember um, our ancestors who went before us and the, the beautiful stitching. I mean, look how pretty. So the crocheted dress and then the embroidery across there. So very, so really, really neat. So, um, and then here's some of the other two and a half inch squares that I have cut. Just every little piece that I could get out of those um, cloth, out of the cloth I'm using for those other squares. So I said I had done the pattern a little bit differently. Let me explain again. So you can see how the block, they had you cut, you're, you're making you know, just that red, okay? So right here is just a two and a half inch strip. And then you're joining it with a block over here that has the same two and a half inch strip. Some of these pieces, I did not want to cut a two and a half inch strip. So like, like this one, I didn't want, if I cut two and a half, I'm gonna get mostly that, but then this one's just gonna have like that little bit right there. So what I did instead, and this is gonna take me a little bit of finagling to, to do this, I'm gonna to have to lay out um, the quilt, but I left it this size. So two and a half and two and a half, uh, this is cut four and a half. Because with this two and a half and two and a half put together, that's gonna to be five, right? But you're gonna lose a half inch there, so that's down to four and a half. So I cut, um, I cut my piece eight and a half by four and a half, so that when it's finished into this part of the quilt, it would just be four inches. I hope that made sense. But I'm gonna have to lay this out because I have these center parts done and the center part done, and then instead of having two half pieces here, I'm gonna have to join um, what here would be this green two and a half inch square and this red two and a half inch square. I'm gonna sew those two together along with this part and those two together. So I'll be making this strip right here and attaching it to this block and then attaching it to that block instead of you know, half of it being with this one and half of it being with that one. I just didn't wanna cut some of these apart. Like, look at that. I just wanted that to be a whole piece right there instead of cutting it apart into two sections. So that's what I'm working on. So that will, that's exciting. It's just, I love working on pieces like this. This material is all still in really good shape. Um, it's one that I would not machine wash. I would hand wash if it needs to be washed. Um, but not all materials that you find are gonna be in that, that great a shape. If there's holes and things in it, it's a little difficult to work with. These are still in really good shape and are able to be sewn and, um, and lightly ironed where I need some pressing done. So that's a project that I'm working on. It's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And again, I'll, I'll include um, as much information as I can about this quilt um, so that you can work on that yourself if you find some um, blocks that you have that you wanna finish. All right, so one more thing before I start into uh, client quilts. Tonight is my guild meeting. I think I mentioned that earlier. And uh, this year at our guild, um, I am in charge of um, the challenge committee and um, co-chairing it with an, another lovely lady and we decided this year to come up with a UFO challenge. We didn't want to challenge people to start any more new projects. Um, there are some other 
committees that are doing some block of the month and things like that. Quilts of Valor, so much fun. But just for ours, we decided let's finish some of the things we already have. And so we've been working through this UFO challenge and I will link this down below too. This is just something we came up with, um, a fun thing to do for throughout the year. So this is our April meeting. So tonight they're supposed to bring a UFO finished. Um, that's a project that somebody else gave to them. Unfortunately, I did not get mine done. <laughs> I'm working on some other things. I just, I don't have enough time in the day to get everything done. So I do have one that I want to do for this. I just could not get it done before tonight. Um, but it's a good challenge. I've, um, I've finished some of the other months and next month it says a UFO baby quilt. If you'd like a copy of this PDF for yourself, just so you can try to finish off some throughout the year, it's just a fun way. It's a reminder every month that, oh, I want to work on that project and no perfection here. If it doesn't get done, it doesn't get done, but it's just a challenge. We're trying. Um, so my guild meeting is tonight. Anybody that brings um, their completed uh, UFO, uh, we've printed out these, these cute certificates and they get one each month. So I called this one the gifted UFO challenge. Uh, that might kind of be kind of a funny title, but meaning that the UFO was gifted to them. So if they finish it, they'll be have their name put here presented by the guild and uh, just a fun a fun thing. Maybe a good idea for your guild if you're looking for something to work on. I'll try to finish mine and get it out, but um, just didn't make it done this week. <laughs> so how about some customer quilts? Look at some uh, customer finishes. The first one I have has um, already gone home and this was a mail-in client and uh, Ella's quilt. And let me um, insert a picture here so you can see what the quilt looks like and then I'll tell you some details about it. All right, so this was um, a large quilt, 63 by 80, and um, very cute, really nice. This is all Cory Yoder fabric. This is from her Prairie line, which is several years old. I'm not sure you'll be able to find um, <laughs> that exact fabric anymore, but Cory Yoder's fabrics usually all, all um, tend to um, go together. So the same quilt could be made with some of her other fabrics, just not the exact same prints. Again, that was the prairie prints. And um, Ella said that this quilt was a pattern by Sherry Falls, which is from This and That Stitchery. She called the pattern Garden Grove. And I was um, on This and That Stitchery's website trying to find the pattern, and I haven't found it yet. So I've put an email out to Ella just asking her if she can let me know whether that was in a book or whether that was a standalone pattern. And um, as soon as I get that information, I can put that in the comments below. I'll put it in the description below. So if you're interested in making this quilt for yourself, then you'll know where to find it. But really, really pretty. Um, again, spring colors, isn't it? Aren't they really cute? And um, so with this one, I sent Ella several um, design choices and she came back and she said she loved them all I could pick <laughs> so the one I went with was the ginger flower and I did it pretty tight um, and I, I used the inspiration off of some of those fabrics that had that same um, like five petal flower shape in them and I think it went really well I used a white thread because uh, so much of the of, um, the top was white and I just thought it looked really good in the white and uh, really, really came together nicely. I love the polka dot prints. I have something for polka dot, <laughs> but and that was really pretty as well. So just a beautiful quilt, Ella, and, um, and very, very nice. And um, if that's a quilt that you would like to make, uh, several different blocks from what I'm remembering, um, and um, just a good way to measure your, or uh, challenge your talents there and learn some other blocks. Another interesting thing I liked about that quilt was, did you see how the border was different on the corners? Um, on the two, on the opposite sides, there was a little bit different of a border and a nice effect. That's just really, I love little 
uh, surprises in a quilt top like that. So very nice. And uh, All right, so let's start with the quilts that I have with me. We're going to start with this first one at the top. And um, while I insert a larger picture of it so you can see the full quilt top, I will pull it down and then we'll discuss it. So this pattern is called Nightingale, and this is a lo and behold pattern, and I will link um, down below, I'll link um, their website so that you can find that pattern really easily. And this is such a fun quilt. This one uh, Jenna put together, and um, it's all fabric that has to do with yarn. It's so cute. And I have to show you, so... So you can see the balls of yarn here. And then, um, like this orange print, you can see the balls of yarn, the skeins, um, scissors, and then the knitting needles. And then some of this other has some teapots on it. Um, really, just really cute fabric. And then others that are complementary, but um, not yarn per se, but uh, some flowers really pretty I just really so the colors aqua um, some gold some pink some melon I want to show you something that uh, I think you could see it on the on the pictures but let me show you so normally um, I've talked in other videos where um, when you're piecing a backing to uh, leave the selvages on and stitch um, inside past those selvages and it's just real easy to line up your fabric when you keep the selvages together and um, stitch on past those selvages and then cut off that selvage. And when Jenna gave me the quilt, she says, well, you're gonna think I'm crazy, um, but I want the selvages to show in my backing. And this is why. The selvage of this fabric says, I love yarn, uh, Ruby Star Society, and then it has Sarah Watts, which is the designer of this fabric line. And she says, I just, I love the selvage and I think it's so cute. So we even put it in the backing. Isn't that cute? That is a great idea. And again, just surprises and quilts are so fun. Something you're not expecting and you turn it over and see that. And uh, so then can you see the pantograph? This pantograph is called Knit One Pearl Two. Is that not perfect? And it just adds so much texture. This is actually a print fabric in the same line that looks like knitting. I don't know if I can get a good enough picture there. Can you see that a little bit? If you turn it the other way, it looks like knitting stitches. Um, I love this pantograph. It is um, loads of texture, very simple to stitch out, lots of swirls. Um, I just think it is it's just a fun pantograph, one of my favorite to, to stitch. And um, we used a cream color thread. And I didn't write that down, but it's a cream color on the top and the back. It just blends right in with the back. And uh, the top actually just blends right in with the top too. So, so cute. Really nice. So the Nightingale pattern, you can find that in the link below. If this is a pattern you'd like to make. There's the quilt, the block itself. So it's just the same block done in different ways. So you see this one, um, the uh, cross. So the you've got the, the orange color cross in the middle, the real skinny one. Then the, the next one, the plus sign, uh, you can turn it this way, it looks like an X, <laughs> is the darker one. Now look on the next one, how they swapped. That one's um, mostly darks. And then, so some of the others, you kind of swap the um, the values of the fabric and how it changes the block. And that one, this one down below, the lighter one on the outside, 
just mixed and matched that whole line of fabrics. It's just really, really cute. Really cute. The background in each one is this pink, almost like a pink um, star cloud type, a little bit of white cloud on there. Really fun. Very nice. This uh, Jen is in my guild, and so this will be going back to her tonight at uh, our guild meeting. So the next one, next one I have, let's go to the one at the bottom first, and uh, I'll pull this out while you can look at some pictures of the larger quilt. All right, this is Judy's quilt. And uh, she said this isn't for anybody in particular. She's trying to use up some fabrics and she used up um, lots and lots of pinks. So this is a log cabin block. And uh, just one of my girls saw this one. Oh, that's cute, she says. <laughs> um, again, just a very simple quilt. You can make this, you know, so you're starting with a two and a half inch square. You're adding a two and a half inch square next to it and then a four and a half and you know just the typical four and a half there four and a half six and a half six and a half you know you're just adding the two inches each time so i showed a quilt a couple weeks ago where you only added on one side and that was that gray and um, green quilt from before where you're only adding on one side so you end up your two inch square is the corner piece and you're just adding all the others around here. This is actually like log cabin where you're adding the continuous lines all the way around. Um, so Judy added, again, the, the interest here is you put the green squares in the middle and the same on the border. That's a really great idea. So everything's pink, but um, if everything was pink, it would be too much. By adding that green really adds to that and again, the polka dot print in that cute so this um well even for the back she even used up fabrics for the back so it's a very pieced backing very nice job we talked about a couple weeks ago about wide backings and how economical they are this is a great way to save money too is um, if you have larger pieces and you're wanting to use up use piece them together as the backing so it goes really well together um, the greens, a lot more of the greens on the back. I've got some threads here. Always finding threads. Until it finally gets bound, you just always have some threads. Um, all right, so let's talk about the pantograph. And that pantograph is called Giggle. I'm trying to get a good shot of it here. Maybe on the pinks. Maybe you can see it on the pinks. There, can we see that? Giggle is very, um, it's a playful print. I thought it went well. It, to me, it feels like a girly print, so it went well with the pinks. I like the chunkiness of the swirls um, and the big, the paisley shape there and the big swirls. I like the chunkiness of it. When you go skinnier, I think it, um, gives it a more a classier look like the pantograph espresso or something like that I think it gives it more of a classy look but again it's the same type of shape but when you make it really chunky like that then it um, it just gives it a more playful fun feel we used a white thread on top and the back that blended the best very fun very fun and then all those swirls really complement the straight um, boxy boxiness of the um, top adding a hint of softness with all those pinks very fun quilt very fun so a good way to use up your scraps again hope you're getting some inspiration and some ideas on how you can make quilts you know you don't have to go out and buy new fabric you don't have to go out and um, 
and find a new, you know, a kit I'll put together. You can make something like this, littles at a time. You know, if you finish one project and you want to use those uh, fabrics and put together something like this. Um, really, really fun. Really great job, Judy. All right, I have one more to show you and we'll talk about this one right here. I'll insert a couple pictures so that you can see what it looks like. All right, Becky sent this one to me, and this is for a granddaughter. Shh, don't tell. The granddaughter knows it's coming, but she doesn't know what it looks like. Um, so this is all hearts. This reminds me of the old, maybe not old, but the eye spy quilts, you know, that you would do in little things, and you would find try to find the different um, characters in there. Um, each heart is a different print, but very fun. So those remind me of Peeps. <laughs> and then, like, this one has the Aristocats. Oh, there's all different kinds. There's cats, there's bunnies, um, Lion King. Here's some animals, some barnyard animals. Here are some jungle animals. Each one is just, uh, each one's different. Here we have cats and dogs in that one. This one are chicks and hens. So you see how she's kind of mixed it up. So here, the chicks and hens print is up here, but then a totally different print down here, just a, um, a polka dot print where this monkey block, the monkey block has the same fabric for the entire heart. So a mixed and match there. Here's some, some cats. Oh, her granddaughter's just gonna love. She'll be, she could spend hours just looking at the quilt and all the different patterns and stuff. So this pattern is called Sincerely Yours. This is um, from Donna Jordan, and I'll link her website down below so that you can see. This is actually a free pattern. Um, on her website, she shows it as a wall hanging, but obviously you can do like Becky did and make it as large as you want, add as many hearts as you want to make it as big as you want. So this one actually measures square. It's about 53 by 53. Um, and it'll be a nice a nice size for her granddaughter. So then the border, the uh, sashing fabric is all this purple. Um, <clears throat> like with little triangles on it. Her backing fabric is really pretty. This is a directional print. Um, so we wanted all the flowers to be facing up so it's the same, you know, oriented up just like the hearts are. Um, and this is a blue fabric um, put out by um, Kim Schaefer. And she's with Andover. Um, you'll have to find your favorite uh, fabric store, see if they have that one available. I don't have a link for that one. The same print um, in the yellow is what we did the binding with. All right. I'm trying to get in close so you can see this um, pantograph. This one is swirly. This is actual, this pantograph is called mistletoe. And so, which would make me think they meant it, they intended it for Christmas. But the reason I chose this one is because the, the feather type um, design right here, to me kind of look like hearts. So to me, it was a way of adding hearts without doing a, a totally heart print. I have some other heart prints that would just be hearts all over the place. I liked that this added some softness, some swirl, some girliness, um, and the heart feature without going with just hearts. I felt like with all the hearts on the front and the busyness of the fabric on the front, that to do something that was all hearts all over was just gonna be too much. So by adding the um, this one, we have the hint of hearts, but with the thinner um, swirls, and uh, some softness there. Kind of goes along with the flowers too. 
So I also did the binding on this one um, for Becky, and I used the binding tool that I talked about a couple weeks ago. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This um, cut right bind up tool. This came in my sew sampler box a couple weeks ago. I really am liking this. Um, I've The product I've used before was working great. I, I had no troubles with it. I find that this one's even a little easier. Um, and I think I showed on that video where I actually used an erasable marker to mark my line on this one. So um, here, I think you can see it better. So what you're doing, um, and I, with this one, I find that you don't have to be as exact as I did with my other one. So on this one, you're leaving some tails, like five inches. So you're doing your, your entire binding, but you're leaving a, a space. It doesn't have to be any exact size, but they suggest about 10 inches. It doesn't have to be exact. You're leaving at least five inches of tail on this side, at least five inches of tail on this side. And what you're doing is um, the part that's unstitched. You're laying those two pieces of fabric together so that they um, touch and then you're folding this part back and folding this one back. So you've got two pieces of your binding fabric that are coming together and you're ironing right there at that spot. And when you iron that, um, it's you know folded double, folded in half, let's say. It's folded in half and then you're ironing it down at that point. So when you open it up, you have this, this cross mark. And they suggest in the directions that you actually mark that with the erasable pen. I found with doing this one that I could see that mark, and so what you're doing is laying that mark right here where this cross is. And on when you're doing the left-hand side, you're gonna have the L up. You lay this cross hairs right here on top of that um, ironed, where the, where you've ironed that piece and it, it that cross hair is on your fabric. You're laying that right there and you're cutting it. And then for the right side, it's that simple. <laughs> It's that simple. You're doing the same thing. You match the crosshairs right here to the fabric on the right side, and then you're cutting. They give you this little, the notch off too, so that you can line this back up with um, the edge of your binding and just clip that part off for the left and then for the right. Um, so you wouldn't have to do that, but that's a, a, you know, a feature that they add in there too. So I'm just finding this is um, very simple. And so then when you have those two... Um, mitered edges and then you're stitching those two together and doing it um, like I've always done it. But I'm finding this very simple to use. I have you pulled out the directions again just to make sure I was doing it correctly, but I think um, it's even easier to use than the one I was using before. So a good find. Um, again, I didn't know that I need it. You know, kind of like I said earlier, you don't know you need something until um, you get it and you try it and you think, oh, this works really great. So. So if you're interested in that, it really it really worked well. I'm enjoying this new product. And like I said, you wouldn't necessarily even have to do the pin along with it. There is a erasable pin that I talked about a couple weeks ago. But when I was doing this binding, I didn't I didn't even mark it with a pin. I could see well enough. Okay. I do plan on doing a um, video on binding here soon. I am one that like I do not like my stitching to show on my binding at all. And so um, I'll do a video soon about how I attach my binding to the front, how I iron it over to the back, and I do use um, little binding clips, the little wonder clips, and I'll link those down below. I use those, they're, they're a lot of fun. <laughs> Again, one of those things I never thought I needed, but, um, and I can do a binding without it, but as I iron it over, I just find it holds it in place really well. And so I'll do a video here soon about how I um, then hand stitch it down to the back and tuck my threads underneath so that they don't show. I, I don't want any little um, hem stitch or anything like that. I just want it um, buried underneath there so you can't see it. All right, and then how, how to do the, the corners and things as well. So Becky, this one will be coming back to you. Becky was a, um, a male in client. And so this will be coming back to you in the next couple days. So, so exciting. And I know you'll be happy to get that to your granddaughter and she will be excited too. This is a really fun quilt. So that's all I have to share with you this week. I appreciate you being here each week. Saint, thank you so much for the comments you leave um, below. It's so fun to hear what you're working on and uh, 
hear your experiences and, and uh, how you relate to the things that I'm showing here and uh, just a lot of fun. So if you are in need of long arm uh, quilting services, my information is on my website, TammyErnestQuilting.com, and that's linked in the uh, description down below, and that gives you all your information. I am going to be making some changes to my intake form that you print out there, so um, in the next couple weeks, if you're sending a quilt, you might just want to download that information again. I just need, I'm needing some extra information that I don't have on there right now. I need to explain payment a little bit better. Um, I have that question a lot about how do I pay you. And so I will be making some updates to that PDF uh, that you can print off and so you can have all that information. So I hope you have lots of uh, time to quilt this week. And I look forward to seeing you back here next week when we'll talk about some other long arm finishes and how I'm working through my other projects. So have a great week and uh, we'll see you next time.